<clears throat> Pax Atomora Familia, Dias and Bonum. I know it's been a while and I'd be so busy um, doing so much stuff for the Moorish American Consulate on the back end and in the, and behind the scenes that sometimes it takes me, sometimes I can't get to you. Um, and I want to get to you because I know there's certain things that I pretty much want to talk to you about. One of those things, a more... Uh, a couple of more sparked this Facebook Live. And this Facebook Live is your unalienable, inalienable rights to travel. You have unalienable, inalienable, by blood right to travel on your ancestral land. That is North, South, Central America, and the adjoining islands. Now, people ask me, I need a passport, I want to travel. Where do I get a passport? Etymologically, a passport is a noun, passport, plural noun, passports. It is an official document issued by a government. It is an official document issued by a government certifying that the holder's identity and citizenship in entitling them to travel upon its protection to and fro foreign countries. Now let me go a little bit deeper into that because I want to I want to lay out specific laws, the supreme laws of the land that you need to utilize when you're traveling on your own land. That means when you go from one place to the other place to another place, it is your inalienable right, right? So a passport is an official document issued by a government. Who's the government here? In North America, it is the Moroccan, the Moroccans, the Moorish American, the federal government. We issue the right to travel cards, right? But you have that right automatically by being a Moorish American national. The correction of status is very important and it is what uh, accesses, it's like literally opening the door to your rights and, and your liberties. Because prior to you opening that door, you were identifying as a ward to the colonial European foreign estate, foreign state, which is not even a state. It's a colony. Um, Pax Atamor, Jiramor, Islam, Kimberly. What's up, Wally? <laughs> so I just wanted to make a quick video just to give a little bit of a navigation because we are going to create some pamphlets that talk to the rights to travel, but I don't like getting long-winded because I know you have a long day and you have things to do. And also I have a long day and I have things to do. Uh, Al Moroccan National needs no permission from any other being, none whatsoever. You have birthrights, you have heredimments, you have um, supremacy, supremacy clause of the constitution, right? I wanna get into all that. I wanna stay on the right to travel in a passport is just your nationality identification card proving to whoever you're showing it to as verification that you have the right to pass the port per the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. I'm not even going to go into the Treaty of Peace and Friendship because I did that on Tea with Roof last week where it talks about signals, what the so-called United States banner signals, it signals protection under the Moorish American government, the Moroccan empire, those are signals. And if I can find that particular one, because I didn't really want to highlight it because I did to tea with Ruth to tell you about it, which was last week. So a passport is a document that you use when you're traveling internationally that will let people know who you come, where you come from and your authority. So when people, so when you talk about nationality and you talk about authority, it's like your passport. Because keep in mind, we're under Admiralty Mar Maritime Jurisdiction, which is the sea, right? Everybody's been cast out to sea by claiming to be a nom de guerre, right? Um, regardless of if we were doing this through our own rights or through ignorance, that is the realities. I'm going to try to find, if I can find it, that particular place on the um, <clears throat> Treaty of Peace and Friendship to give you fire. Because this is what you use when you go into the airports and you are asked for your identification. Your nationality is the first in the supremacy identification. It supersedes everything else in your pocket. All right. 
And I'm going to go to <clears throat> 1508, specifically mentions identification documentation, 18 U.S.C. 1028. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read the first section. Section 1028 of Title 18 designates three specific special non-federal identification documents and gives them preferred treatment. These documents, these three documents in absence of national ID identity cards are the primary means by which an individual establishes his identity in the United States. Those three documents are your birth certificate, your driver's license, and your personal identification card. Okay, I'm going to I, I'm going to uh, what's the word? Interpret what that just said. That said, if you don't have a national identity, which means you don't have a passport, if you don't have a national identification card, which is your passport, these three corporate cards are what you use to identify yourself. Islam, you said pre-existing natal uh, supremacy clause provided, protected by constitutional agreement, we the people, right? So what that says is if you don't have a national identification card, which means if you're not in your proper person and you have a document, a little piece of paper, or you can articulate yourself that tells, tells the person that you're interacting with who you are, these other corporate documents or what you use. I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on that. What they're saying is, if you have no nationality, you are a ward, and you should have these three cards to identify who you are, where you come from, who owns you. That's what that's saying, okay? That's what that 1508 specifically mentioned identification document 18 USC 1028. I'm going to read that again just so for clarity's sake. Section 10, 28 of the title 18 designates three specific non-federal identification documents and gives them preferred treatment. These three documents in absence of national identity cards are your birth certificate, your driver's license, and your personal identification card. The birth certificate tells them what corporate ward, you, what corporate ward uh, jurisdiction you were born in. The driver's license is what state you currently domicile in or residence to. And your personal identification card kind of elaborates on those three things. And what they say is if you don't have a nationality, you better have these three cards or you don't have permission to travel or to do anything. You got to go through either the corporate ward state or you have to be a national of the land. Islam. So that's what 1508 specifically mentions identification documents, 18 USC 1028. That's what that and you can get that off the Department of Justice website by just searching that. OK, that's one thing you can use. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Now, when we talk about passports, a signal, Article 4, a signal. I'm sorry, of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786, 1836, Article 4, specifically says a signal or pass shall be given to all vessels belonging to both parties, which by which they are to be known when they meet at sea. And if the commander of the ship of war of either party shall have other ships in his convoy, the declaration of the commander shall alone be sufficient to exempt from any examination. That wasn't the particular one, but it said a lot in there. I didn't find it on this one. Either party shall meet in the nation. Okay. Article three. If either of the parties shall be at war with any nation whatsoever and take a prize belonging to that nation, and there shall be found on board subjects or items belonging to the other nation, they will be they will be set at liberty. That's part of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. That's specifically what that says. Um, um. Okay. It says some other stuff, but I don't want to go too deep into that. When I find it, I'll post it. But what it says is that if these two these two people meet at sea, it is the passport, your identity that is going to be what determines how you're treated. If you have a nationality passport, 
identification that you receive from your nation, if you have that, you will pass the port based on the treaty of peace and friendship or whatever treaty agreement your two nations have. But if you don't have a nation and you have corporate cards, you have restrictions as to how you move and navigate because you don't you can't navigate outside of another nation. All right. That was that. All right. The United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People also give you so much information. I would love to talk about this particular document. It has about 40 plus articles in it. Give, it's, a, it's just additional um, information that you use when you are confronted with someone saying, I need a state issued ID. I'll get into that. I just want to get with the law so you can start doing your reference check and make sure you get grounded in this these fundamentals. Reading is really interpreting and comprehending and navigating appropriately because if you can't read, you can't interpret and if you can't interpret, you navigate. Your navigation you're going to be like this, bumping in the rocks, right? Article 37 talks about indigenous people have the right to the recognition, observant, observance, and enforcement of treaties, agreements, and other constructive arrangements concluded with states or their successors and, and to have states honor and respect such treaties, agreements, and other constructive arrangements. What that is saying is that this service corporation and its enclave, meaning all its colonial corporate foreign estates, have the, cannot deny recognition of the treaties between the two nations. Regardless of if they're a nation or not, there are treaties on how you are to navigate and interact with one another. And the consoles from those two are the ones who decide between the disputes. So that's not magistrates of a corporate colonial who have no authority because they'd have no declaration of, declar uh, declaration of authority. Order issued from a government give them the right to speak or to act. Islam? So that was Article 37. So indigenous people, when we send out the notice of existence for the Moorish American Consulate and they, does, they do not acknowledge the treaty agreement between us are they in violation of Article 37 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People? I say yes, guilty. So, but Obama, Barack Hussein Obama in 2009, as well as Hillary Rodden Clinton in 2012, did a vid video, which I posted a couple of days ago, uh, acknowledging who, what nation, the Moroccan nation and its people, our ancestors, are the ones who first recognized them. And now they're trying to act like they don't know who you are. They're in breach of everything. And chapter 24 of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship says exactly what happens when you're in breach. I'm going to tell you. Article 24 of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786-1836, still in force says this, Article 24. If any differences shall arise by either parties infringing on any of the articles of these of this con of this treaty, I'm gonna say that again. If any differences shall arise by either party infringing on any of the articles of this treaty, I'm gonna say that again. If any differences shall arise by either party infringing on any of the articles of this treaty, peace and harmony shall remain notwithstanding in the fullest force until a friendly application shall be made for an arrangement and until the application shall be rejected. No appeal shall be made to arms. If And if a war shall break out between the parties nine months, shall be granted to each subject of both parties to dispose of their effects and retire with their property. And, if it, and it is further declared that whatever indulgence in trade or otherwise shall be granted to any of the Christian powers, the citizens of the United States shall be equally entitled to them. So that says if you can't continue to, if you keep infringing upon 
the treaties between the two parties, which we know they're doing. Peace can't be here. And you got to go home because you ain't got birthrights here. And we don't know where you're going. But you got to get out of here. That's called the Expatriation Act. That's called the, I'm sorry, my correction, the Decolonization Act, which has been in force for about 100 years, waiting for the Moors over here to get their business together. And we too busy trying to be colored people. But I digress. I'm going to go over this just because I want to reel in the point of consul. Article 20. If any of the citizens of the United States or any persons under their protection shall have any disputes with each other, the consul should decide between the parties and whenever the consul shall require any aid or assistance from our government to enforce his decision, it may be immediately granted to them. Why aren't we immediately getting granted uh, assistance and we're being and we're not being recognized in a in a with within the next why aren't we doing why is why isn't that happening hmm i wonder so that's the treaty of peace and friendship this article talks about so much stuff y'all man i i would i would never like i couldn't even get through it all but i wanted to go to the Univer universal declaration of human rights specifically the universal declaration of human rights under article 13 the universal declaration of human rights under the article 13 the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, Article 13, specifically states this. Everyone has the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. Every person, everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own, and to return to his country. Article 13. Everyone has the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. Everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own, and to return to his country. So, so much more, y'all. Let me tell you. The fire, you have the right to your ancestral land. You have the right to educate your children and give them knowledge based on your ancestral cultural heritage. You have the right to do whatever you want to do in terms of harmony, peace, and tranquility. If you want to sit outside and just be, you have the right to sit outside and just be. If you want to sit in your mode of conveyance, you can sit in your mode of conveyance wherever you pair to you want to be. If you want to travel down the road in your conveyance with no tags or stickers or any insignia as to who you are, you have that right because you are the sovereigns of the land. You are not a part of this European Albion, uh, I say fraction called the sovereign citizens because there can't be, how you going to be a sovereign when you a citizen? Because a sovereign in citizens is like an oxymoron. You are not sovereign citizens. Those are people, again, trying to hypothecate your status. You're the sovereigns. You're the Americans. They are neither one of those things. I watched a show called Girl Meets World. It was based on Boy Meets World, where they had a science project, not a science project, the history project of tracing their ancestry, y'all. And in this, this episode, they had to come back to the class and talk about who they are and where they're from. In this class, um, in this class uh, document, or I'm sorry, this, uh, I guess it was a oral book report or oral report presentation. They had to talk about where they come from. The very next day when they had to talk about it, they had nothing of substance that traces to nationality to any degree. They couldn't tell you where they were from. They couldn't. They were talking about Irish soap. They were talking about all types of stuff as, as opposed to ancestry. They couldn't even tell them because their parents did not know. We are doing our children a disjustice, not letting them know where they come from. But like I said, Aboriginal, Indigenous people of the land, you have the right to determine your own life. You have the right to associate with whoever you want to associate with. You have the right to come and go wherever you want to come and go. You have the rights. Nobody can take them from you. They are yours based on the divine, the great God Allah. And no man can, can inflict laws and regulations on you when they don't even have sovereignty or right of soil or blood of the land. So, 
There was some other stuff that I wanted to kind of go over. Indigenous Article 18 of the same United Nations Declarations on the Rights of Indigenous People. Article 18 talks about indigenous people have the right to participate in decision makings and matters which affect their rights. Got you got you got you gotta you got that. I don't want to go too deep. I just want to give you a little bit of fire in your belly so you can start app demonstrating in de jour in confidence without fear, which is false information that you got within you right now that's causing you to navigate in certain uh, ways. Indigenous people have the right to establish and control their own educational systems, institutions, providing education in their own languages. Mm. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm about to, I'm just getting too excited. <clears throat> Article 8, which I like. Indigenous people and individuals and individuals have the right to not to be subjected to forced assimilation or destruction of their culture. What does that sound like to you? So they can't tell you you can't wear your turbans when you go to your places of employment. They can't tell you you can't wear um, your your locks in your hair. They can't tell you you can't um, wear your ancestral garbs wherever you want to go. They can't strict, they can't, I don't care what kind of event it is. If it's on your land, they can't tell you what you can and can't do. Um, so that's kind of what that pretty much say. Um, so much. Oh, goodness. Article six. Here's the ones for daddies who have mamas who don't want to nationalize their babies because they're just too ignorant. Every indigenous individual has the right to a nationality. Article six of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Every indigenous individual has the right to a nationality. Every individual has a right to a nationality. OK, so if mommy won't do it, yes, fathers, you have the right to do it as the heir. And you're the heir because she claiming not to be an heir. She claiming to be somebody's property and trying to put the child in that same category because she's too ignorant or receiving too many illusional benefits. She feels as though she's getting. Every child has a right to a nationality. Mommy can't deny that because she's just ignorant. Man, you have the right to the, re the resources. You have the right to medical care. You have the right self-determination. They can't sit here and to ask you, do you have a corporate war identification in order to partake in their services? That's a violation, y'all. Get your writ right up. They can't sit here and be like, oh, you ain't got, like when you go to get some um, spirits, <laughs> they sit here and ask you for your little corporate card. <laughs> be like, oh, do you have a, a, a state? I no, they can't ask you for that. No, they can't ask you for that. You be like, I got this national national identification card that you can use to tell to 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 so we can have an exchange, right? Islam, uh, Asayin. <laughs> I mean, this. I'm going to do a class on the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. And what are Indigenous people? They don't put Aboriginal Indigenous people because Aboriginal Indigenous, we already are in there because we're Indigenous, but we're Aboriginal Indigenous, which means we come first. We've been here before any other Indigenous so-called people. We're Aboriginal Indigenous. <laughs> Islam family? Oh my God, I, I would go on forever in this document. So I'm not even going to beat a dead horse because what's the point in beating a horse that is dead? I'm saying no. So passport is what, y'all? Let's go back. Let's do some recap. Passport is what? An official document issued by a government. What is the Moorish American government? That's the government on this land. Ain't nothing else here. The Moorish American government. The Moors are the government here, which is the people. We, the people, make the government. And because we are the Aboriginal Indigenous people here, we have sovereignty over how we would like things to happen on our land. And everything that I listed you are your fire and your guns. <laughs> Since you love guns, it is your scimitar. It is your fire. It is your weapon. It is the supreme laws of the land. They hypothecated because they know you can't demonstrate it. That was cool. You like that little catchphrase? They hypothecated because you can't demonstrate it. And that's where that study, 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 you sleepy-headed Moors comes from. Because when you go to the airport 
And and they sit here like you're can I can I get your corporate card? But like, what are you talking about? You know, play dumb like them. You know, you, we gotta get fun with this stuff, y'all. We gotta be like, yeah, here's my national identification card, and this supersedes any other corporate cards you're trying to in place and inflict upon me. And they be like, well, I I can't I can't I, I can't can you get your supervisor? And y'all gotta realize sometimes it might take you twenty minutes. You might miss your flight, but because this is their error and this this there, they're gonna put you on another flight. <laughs> they gonna put you on another flight. Slow down. Relax. Breathe. Don't always think a battle is something that is you you have to fight for the things that have been taken out. Cause keep in mind, we're in this position because we have accepted that cast that has been placed upon us fraudulently we've accepted it so now we have to wiggle out of it a little bit we gotta we gotta fight our way out of it but we ain't gotta fight with no none of this we gotta fight with this and this and this so a passport is an official document issued by a government Certifying the holder's identity with citizenship, uh, entitling them to travel upon its protection in foreign to and foreign and from foreign countries. But the point I wanted to tell get to you, I can't remember. I might have to read this, watch this again because I done quoted so much stuff that I gotta draft some stuff. So get your writ writing game up, family. You you the heirs to the land. They're supposed to be recognizing the treaty agreements between the two nations. They're supposed to be doing that. Per United Nations, they violating everything. They have no standing in law. Whoever identifies as the 14th Amendment slave corporate person, whoever has not declared and proclaimed their nationality and is walking around as a nom de guerre, you have no rights, family. You only have privileges. This is all we're trying to tell you. You can identify yourself however you want to identify yourself, but claim your, <laughs> your Moorish nationality. Claim your nation. And let's get some work done. Islam family? So, how do we travel? You travel with your national identification, which is your passport family. You don't need two of them. You don't need an ID and a right to travel. What? You don't even need it. Your nationality identification tells you. Because when they call and be like, I don't understand this. I don't know what this is. The first thing you say, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, is this is the agreement between the United States, which you're asking for a corporate card. Our agreement is how we, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship is how we interact. And if you can't understand that, then you need to bring a console here. Whatever representation that is above you and your pay grade and your 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 your, your knowledge base and let's, let's talk. I'm a Moorish American national. Different from that so-called sovereign citizen nonsense booga booga booga. Right? Treaty of Peace and Friendship is your scimitar. It's how you slay the dragon. What's in your wallet? Hmm. <sighs> I said a lot. So who's going to the to the airport going to show their nationality identification card? And be like, look, this is what you asking me. What? We gotta get to the point. But like, what is a corporate card? Like, I don't need to write. I don't need no no I, nobody giving me permission to do stuff on my own land. So this is all I'm saying, y'all family. I said a lot. We have a document called the Supreme Laws of the Land, which has all of these documents, these these lawful documents in them. Send me an email. I will send it to you. Nationality is the order of the day, family. If you, if you need assistance nationalizing, there's a multitude of ways to do that. There's a multitude of documents in the Northeast group. Um, but I'll give you the email. It's Moorish American Consulate, N-E at gmail.com. Send me your request and it will be, or demand, because you don't request, you demand. So I got demand. You assist me with my nationality. Like, all right, I'm going to demand you fill out this paperwork. <laughs> So a passport is just is your, it's just your nationality identification card. And treaty is what they can hold you to. That's it. And that's what you hold them to, along with the American Constitution. Man, do you know how easy that is? Because they got books and books and books and books and books and books and files and files and websites and websites. So simple. 
So simple. Pax et amour. Peace and love. Read the, the United Nations Declarations of the Rights of Indigenous People in, the, in, the, in your human rights. Read those too. Those are all those documents that I talked about also are in the file section of the Northeast group. So you don't need me to send you nothing. It's right there. I make it easy for y'all. I make it easy. I make it plain. Pax et amour. But I'm going to do a class on the United Nations declarations on the rights of the indigenous people and the universal declarations. I'm going to do a class on that where I can go over it because sometimes you just want to listen to it. Like you listen to it like me. I listen to stuff over and 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 over again. And then I can articulate it and spit it out. Pax up to more family. Peace and love. I love you. I love you on this lovely Thursday. And Thursday is ruled by Jupiter, which is me, which is probably why I have so much energy today. And um, it's best for spells for justice. I just made a justice spell, y'all. And um, what else? Protection and travel. Oh my God, did y'all just hear that? It's a spell for protection, justice, and travel. That's what Thursday is. The day of Jupiter. Pax et amor. Dies in bonum. 